It's always a privilege to have you on, uh, Kevin. We are honored to greet all of the listeners uh, around the world that are tuning in to the communication powerhouse of the main Christ Jesus. We are with Kevin Annette, who is the director of the International Tribunal Against the Crimes Committed by ber- both the Church and the State. Uh, as a result, as of September 15th, the tribunal actually started, and since then there have been important events that have taken place in order to alert entire communities of the crimes being committed, not just in Canada, but around the world. Always an honor to have you, Kevin, and thank you for keeping us up to date as to what's taking place. And also, you know, we we congratulate you for the important mission that you have in this historic time. Can you share with us, Kevin, what actually took place on September the 18th and what were the results? Yes, on a week ago, on Sunday the 18th, in five countries there were posted proclamations on the doors of churches, over 30 churches, that banished the Catholic and Protestant churches from those territories. Uh, any of the churches involved in harming children were told that they were not allowed to operate anymore on that area. And this was delivered to the churches, and the, the public statement is that they cannot operate there anymore. Kevin, just for our worldwide audience to understand, can you just help us understand a little bit about who's doing this when we know it's the aboriginals um, you know who went ahead and posted these banishment orders but if we today know that both the church and the state work hand in hand to cover up these crimes what laws are they doing or what gives them I guess the right per se you know to go ahead and post this order so what legal backing do they have in order to make this I guess in a legal manner just so that we can understand it's uh, aboriginal people are doing it under their own traditional tribal law which allows and to protect their children against these attacks by by foreign governments or churches. But it's also non-Aboriginal people, like in Ireland, people who were Catholics who have left the church, or even people still in the church, have posted it under common law, saying the courts and the police and the government is helping the churches commit these crimes and covering up the rape and and killing of children. And so it's then up to the community to banish these, uh, these churches. And so it's really under common law the sovereign rights everybody has to protect their own people. Can you also share with us, Kevin, um, whether there was media present, and what was their reaction? I mean, what was the result of you posting this? What did they specifically have to say? Did the establishments find out, and what was their reaction? This action was covered widely by the media, including by uh, a major radio network in America called Democracy Now!, where over 5 million people heard about this, so it's been widely covered. The reaction was very hostile. In Ireland, the, the, the Irish police showed up and tried to arrest people. Uh, church officials physically attacked some of the people trying to read the proclamation. And in Canada, Aboriginal people in Saskatchewan uh, occupied churches and actually told the priests to leave the Catholic Church on the reservation. So there was a lot of uh, uh, attempt to shut this down by the authorities. Uh, can you also give us a confirmation of the list of nations? I know sometimes people confirm and they may not actually, you know, have the guts to go ahead and do something of this nature. But, you know, what nations actually had the courage to go ahead and stand up for their rights and crimes against children? Um, what, what were those nations that took part? Well, there was a number of Aboriginal nations in Canada. Uh, this also happened in five countries in Australia, America, Canada, Ireland, and uh, England. But also uh, Italian people posted a copy in Italian of the proclamation right on the door of the Vatican saying, you know, it's time for these churches to simply be gone. And so it, it happened in six countries. And we expect all the more, more and more people to do this. There have been over 12,000 hits on the YouTube posting of the proclamation already. That's excellent, Kevin, to hear that someone actually had the courage to go knock right on their door, uh, the door of your most criminal organization in existence, and post this banishment order for their crimes against humanity. Um, was there a reaction directly um, you know, that you may have heard of as a result of doing this? There was no reaction uh, yet from the Vatican. They tend to uh, try to ignore these things. Although there was a reaction from priests and others around the world, uh, some uh, priests in Canada actually supported uh, what we were doing, although they said they couldn't you know, come out publicly and support it because there's a lot of fear. But uh, in the coming weeks, we have had a lot of indication that, that a lot more people will be coming on supporting this and supporting our tribunal. 
We understand, Kevin, that you know this weekend is actually a historic event that's taking place right here in Canada, and we understand that you're actually going to be exhuming the bodies of these children that were actually um, assassinated by these criminals, and we're talking about priests, uh, so that no longer can they ignore or deny that these things actually took place. Can you tell us a little bit more about this upcoming event? Yes, uh, on the coming weekend, we plan to uh, conduct investigations, excavations at the grave sites near a major residential school in Canada. And we've received the authority of the uh, Mohawk elders uh, from the Mohawk Nation to do this. They'll be accompanying us when we did uncover these remains. The remains of the children will then be brought back for a proper burial, but we'll also analyze them to see the cause of death. So we'll finally have the missing piece of this investigation. Uh, besides the eyewitness testimonies and the documents, we'll now have forensic proof of these murders. And so we intend to release this knowledge to the world in the coming weeks. If you had, you know, the mic, I guess, for the world listening to you, Kevin, you know, in prior to this historic event taking place, what would you say to the world? What would you say in regards to the way that not only, you know, the Canadian government has actually conducted itself, but how the Catholic Church, um, you know, wrongfully called so, but this organization, how they conducted themselves, what do you suppose is going to happen? You know, we understand it's going to be a turning point, but what would be your message to the world as a result um, of this event? My message to the world would be that it's time that these churches were above the law, that were no longer above the law, that they are don't feel that what they've done is wrong, they feel that they're not answerable to any laws, and we have to change that now because they have raped and murdered generations of children and are covering up that crime, which is just, just as serious as doing the crime itself. So I would say it's time for these churches and, and the people in charge, including the Pope himself, to be brought to trial and to have their, uh, their land and property taken away because they should not have the right to practice anymore when they're harming these children. So that's the first thing I think we need to do if we're serious about stopping this assault on children and the genocide. Kevin, we certainly commend you for the initiatives that you're taking, undertaking, not just in Canada, but around the world. Um, I know that we'll actually be joining you live, um, you know, this weekend, so you can give us more details as to what's taking place as a result of um, the exhumations that are going to take place this weekend here in Canada. For the listener that perhaps they're just finding out for the first time that the International Tribunal started as of September 15th, where can they go to find out more information? How can they support the initiatives, where can they find or where can they send more information to in order to support this? Yes, our website is uh, itccs.org and that has reports of the history of the tribunal and what we're doing all over the world. And besides that, they can read the general information on the background on this genocide at uh, hiddenfromhistory.org. Those are the two websites that uh, people should look to. And uh, in the coming weeks, we'll have more information about what people can do. Uh, to help us. Kevin, largely right now our audience is actually um, a Latin, um, well, mostly Latin American um, audience. And as a result, perhaps they feel that because you mentioned Canada, U.S., Australia, England, Ireland, you know, perhaps they feel that, that it only is applicable to them. This uh, international tribunal, as we understand it, is not just for these countries, but you're asking for other people to speak out. And since Latin America is listening to you right now, can you explain to them how it applies to them, where they can send evidence, um, just so that they feel a little bit more comfortable as to what it is that you're undertaking and how it applies to them as well? Yes. It's very important that people in Latin America be involved in this because they themselves have been the victims for many centuries of the Roman Catholic Church and the crimes committed against indigenous people all over Latin America and against children and uh, uh, others all over uh, Latin America. And one of the examples of that is the uh, one of the groups we work with actually in Guatemala and Mexico are the Mayan indigenous people there who have helped to bring these uh, uh, the, the description of these crimes to the United Nations and other groups. And so we look to people in Latin America to help translate our material and to start a movement there to hold the Catholic Church accountable for the crimes that they're still doing in, in their countries as well. 
Kevin, it's definitely always an honor to speak with you, and we receive that you keep us updated during this week as to any further communication that you would like to present to our audience in regards to the event that's taking place this weekend. And also, we receive that the Angelical Covering is with you, leading you in this project. We know that it's a historic event. We receive that you do obtain the forensic evidence in order to make a great impact all around the world so that this no longer can be denied. So we receive that we are able to keep in contact with you in order to you know, communicate this to the world. And we certainly thank you once again for being with us on our program today and in the upcoming future and events. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you again, and I would like to ask that if you are able to translate our, our banishment order into Spanish to distribute it so that your listeners have a way to help, and I urge them to post these, uh, the banishment order on the Catholic Church in their communities in Latin America as well. 